Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're still rocking an old 32-bit system, you might think Linux has left you behind. But guess what? There are still some great distros keeping 32-bit alive. Today, we'll explore the best Linux distributions that still support 32-bit architecture. Let's dive in. First, why even bother with 32-bit with all the 64-bit machines we have these days? Well, not everyone can or wants to throw out old hardware. Legacy systems still exist in labs, schools, and hobbyist setups. And let's face it, it's kind of fun running a modern OS on a machine older than your smartphone. Starting strong, Debian still supports 32-bit architecture. Debian 12 Bookworm offers a stable and lightweight experience, perfect for aging hardware. It may not be flashy, but it's rock solid. Many Linux distributions have dropped support for 32-bit due to declining use, but Debian continues to support it for these reasons. Stability and versatility. Debian is used in embedded systems, retro hardware, and certain legacy enterprise setups. Community-driven, Debian values broad architecture support as part of its philosophy. Long-term support, LTS. Older 32-bit systems can still benefit from LTS versions of Debian. You can download and install Debian on older 32-bit hardware example, Intel Pentium, or AMD Athlon. The official Debian installer and package repositories include 32-bit versions, security updates and software packages are still being built and maintained for i386. Another one is OpenSUSE. OpenSUSE is an independent Linux distribution that still supports 32-bit systems. While the latest regular release, Leap, no longer provides 32-bit images, the rolling release edition, Tumbleweed, continues to offer them. While OpenSUSE is primarily aimed at developers and system administrators, it can also be used by regular desktop users. However, it's not designed for vintage hardware, so you'll need at least 2 gigabytes of RAM, over 40 gigabytes of storage, and a dual-core processor to run it effectively. Next is Q4. OS, Q4 OS, continues to support 32-bit systems, primarily to serve users with older hardware that can't run modern 64-bit operating systems efficiently or at all. Q4 OS is based on Debian, which still offers 32-bit packages, and it is optimized to run with minimal system resources. The developers of Q4 OS aim to provide a modern Linux experience while keeping the door open for low-powered or aging computers. This makes Q4 OS attractive to users who value performance, stability, and simplicity, and who may not have access to newer hardware. Its Trinity desktop environment is especially lightweight, making it even more suitable for 32-bit systems. By maintaining 32-bit support, Q4 OS offers a lifeline to hardware that might otherwise be discarded, helping extend the usability of those machines and supporting sustainable computing practices. Another is Linux Mint Debian Edition, LMDE. It still supports 32-bit systems, which sets it apart from many other modern Linux distributions that have dropped 32-bit i386 support in recent years. This continued support is largely due to its Debian base. Debian itself still maintains 32-bit architecture builds, and LMDE inherits this capability. LMDE is designed as a fallback option for Linux Mint in case Ubuntu ever becomes unavailable or changes in a way that no longer suits the project's goals. Because Debian is upstream for LMDE and continues to offer 32-bit support, LMDE maintains compatibility with older hardware where 64-bit processors are not available. 
This makes LMDE a valuable option for users with legacy machines or specific use cases that require 32-bit architecture, even as mainstream support across the broader Linux ecosystem continues to decline. Next is AntiX. AntiX is a performance-focused distro based on Debian that's built specifically with old computers in mind. It's super lightweight, runs great on 32-bit systems, and even works with as little as 256 megabytes of RAM. By maintaining 32-bit support, Antix ensures it remains accessible to users with legacy machines, allowing them to have a fully functional modern Linux experience without needing to upgrade their hardware. This approach aligns with Antix's philosophy of minimal resource usage and broad compatibility. Instead of focusing solely on newer, more powerful systems, it keeps the door open for those who rely on older setups, offering them an updated and secure environment. The developers maintain the necessary packages and kernel support to keep 32-bit versions stable and up-to-date, which reflects their commitment to inclusivity and computing resources. Another one is Bodhi Linux. It still supports 32-bit systems, which is increasingly rare among modern Linux distributions. This continued support makes it a practical choice for reviving older hardware that would otherwise struggle with newer operating systems. Bodhi achieves this by offering a lightweight base built on Ubuntu's long-term support LTS releases, but customized with the Moksha desktop environment, a fork of enlightenment, designed to be fast and resource efficient. Their 32-bit support isn't just a token gesture. They actively maintain an app pack ISO specifically for 32-bit machines, ensuring compatibility with older CPUs that lack PAE, physical address extension. This means even very old PCs, such as those from the early 2000s, can potentially run a modern Linux system with community updates and support. While the experience won't be as rich as on newer hardware, Bodhi Linux offers a minimal yet functional environment that users can expand according to their needs without overwhelming their aging systems. The decision to continue 32-bit support stems from Bodhi's philosophy of minimalism and user choice. Rather than forcing users to abandon functional legacy machines, Bodhi Linux gives them a path to continue using their devices productively with current software and security updates. Next is Puppy Linux. Puppy Linux still supports 32-bit systems, which sets it apart from many modern Linux distributions that have dropped 32-bit architecture in favor of 64-bit only. This ongoing support is one of the reasons Puppy remains popular among users with older hardware. Puppy Linux achieves this by maintaining different versions or puplets built on various base systems like Ubuntu, Debian, or Slackware. One of Puppy's key design principles is running entirely in RAM with a minimal resource footprint, which naturally aligns with the limitations of 32-bit systems. So while the mainstream Linux world moves toward heavier, more modern setups, Puppy stays intentionally small, fast, and inclusive of legacy hardware. The community behind it values this niche, so as long as there's interest and need, Puppy Linux is likely to keep offering 32-bit options. Next is Porteus. Porteus continues to support 32-bit systems, ensuring compatibility with older hardware. This commitment allows users with legacy machines to benefit from the distribution's lightweight and modular design. Unlike many modern Linux distributions that have dropped 32-bit support, Porteus remains accessible to a wider range of devices, including those with limited resources. The 32-bit version retains the same core features and flexibility as its 64-bit counterpart, providing a seamless experience for users who rely on older hardware. This approach reflects Porteus's dedication to inclusivity and versatility in serving diverse computing needs. Next is Slytaz. Slytaz is still holding the torch high for 32-bit computing, and it does so with style and a certain rebellious charm. In a tech world obsessed with bigger, faster, and newer, where 64-bit has become the de facto standard and most major Linux distributions have abandoned older architecture support, 
Slytaz dares to be different. It stands as a nimble, feather-light Linux distribution that says, hey, your old hardware still matters. Imagine booting up a dusty Pentium 3 or an aging netbook from the early 2000s. Most modern operating systems would wave the white flag before even trying to boot, but not Slytaz. This distro springs to life on hardware with specs that feel prehistoric by today's standards. Its entire live ISO is under 50 megabytes. Yes, megabytes. Yet it gives you a fully usable desktop, a package manager, a web browser, and even development tools all running efficiently on 32-bit CPUs. That's not just support, it's a full embrace. The developers and community around Slytaz clearly believe in software minimalism and sustainability. So yes, Slytaz still supports 32-bit. Not reluctantly, not in some dusty archive, but actively, enthusiastically, and with purpose. It's a tribute to efficiency, elegance, and the enduring relevance of old hardware. And that makes it more than just a Linux distro, it makes it a statement. Finally, you can also try out Bunsen Labs. Bunsen Labs takes the lightweight power of Debian and wraps it in a sleek, efficient interface that still embraces aging 32-bit hardware. It's like giving your retro tech a second wind and watching it sprint. So, if you've got an old 32-bit machine lying around, don't trash it. Revive it with one of these distros. Let me know in the comments which one you're using, or if I missed any. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more Linux content. See you in the next one.